Apostolic letter of Pope Francis, Totum Amoris Est, on St. Francis de Sales, following. Charity does everything for her children. Between 1620 and 1621, as he neared the end of his life, Francis wrote to one of his priests a letter that sheds light on his view of the times in which he lived. He encouraged his correspondent's desire to compose new works to respond to new questions and showed that he recognized the need for such works. I must tell you that as the, I must tell you that as I become more aware each day of the humors of the world, I desire ever more passionately that God in his goodness should inspire one of his servants to write in a way suited to the tasted to the tasters of this poor world. He gave us his reason, his own view of the age. The world is becoming so delicate that, in a little while, no one will dare any longer to touch it except with velvet gloves or tend its wounds except with perfumed bandages. Yet, what does it matter if only men and women are healed and finally saved? Charity, our queen, does everything for her children. This was no pious platitude or an expression of resignation in the face of defeat. Rather, it was a realization that the world was changing and the mark of a completely evangelical sense of the need to respond to those changes. Francis had early come to that realization and he expressed it in his preface to the treatise on the love of God. I have taken into consideration the thinking of people of this age, nor could I do otherwise. It is very important to keep in mind the times in which one writes. Then, begging the reader's indulgence, he went on, If you find the style a little different from that which I used in the introduction, and both of them different from the style of the defense of the cross, you should know that much is learned and forgotten in 19 years. The language of warfare differs from that of peace, and we speak in one way to young apprentices and in another to older confrères. Yet in response to changing times, where should one begin if not from the history of God's dealings with humanity? This was the ultimate intent of the treatise. My intention is but to represent with the simplicity and straightforwardly, without artifice and certainly without false colors, the history of the birth, progress, decline, operations, properties, advantages, and sublime qualities of divine love. The Demands of an Epochal Shift On this anniversary of the fourth centenary of his death, I have given much thought to the legacy of St. Francis de Sales for our time. I find that his flexibility and his far-sighted vision have much to say to us. Partly by God's gift and partly thanks to his own character, but also by his steady cultivation of lived experience, Francis perceived clearly that the times were changing. On his own, he might never have imagined that those changes represent so great an opportunity for the preaching of the gospel. The word of God that he had loved from his youth now opened up before him new and unexpected horizons in a rapidly changing world. That same task awaits us in this our own age of epochal change. We are challenged to be a church 
that is outward looking and free of all worldliness, even as we live in this world, share people's lives and journey with them in attentive listening and acceptance. That is what Francis de Sales did when he discerned the events of his times with the help of God's grace. Today, he bids us set aside and you concern for ourselves, for our structures, and for that society thinks about us. And consider instead the real spiritual needs and expectations of our people. In our own time too, it is helpful to revisit some of the crucial decisions he made so that we, for our part, respond to today's changes with the wisdom born of the Gospel.